Hello, my name is Rosa Lule and I'm in 12th grade. My name is Jimena Mesa, I'm in 12th grade. My name is Antonio Robles, I'm in 12th grade. My name is Leonardo Andrade, I'm in 7th grade. My name is Brandy C, I'm in 7th grade. My name is Paulina Lopez, I'm in 8th grade. My name is Manuel Davila, I'm in 8th grade. I want to be the first person in my family to go to college. I want to go to college and become an engineer. I am learning how to prepare for college. I'm trying my best to get good grades so I can earn scholarship money for college. One thing that I enjoy about being in REAP is that it gives me the opportunity to um, earn college money in order to pursue a higher education by simply working on level course. One thing I really enjoy about being in REAP is that I get extra support from both my peers and my REAP advisor as well as earning money for college. Something that I really enjoy from REAP is that the chance of not only reaching level fours but also feeling rewarded for the work I do by earning some money for college. My name is David Evans. I'm a farmer in the southern San Joaquin Valley. I came here in the 70s to seek my fortune and become a landowner and was more successful than I ever thought. My wife Polly and I decided that we wanted to figure out a way to give back to the immigrant community because we felt that their work in the fields and the packing houses has contributed to our wealth. We started REAP about 10 years ago and REAP stands for the Rural Education for Americans Project. My name is Sacramento E. Mendez and I graduated from Lindsay High School in 2015. I, am, I was in REAP and I am currently attending Fresno State, um, majoring in business. Hi, my name is Eliberto Marquez. I am a, currently, I just entered my third year of college. I'm going to Cal State Monterey Bay. Um, I'm studying social and behavioral science. Under that, my concentration is anthropology and I'm also mining in biology. My name is Daisy Reyes. I'm currently a junior at Sacramento State and I graduated high school in 2013. The way the REAP scholarship program works is that we have a program from 7th to 12th grade where students earn small amounts of scholarship funding for their good grades, a B plus or an A grade in the required classes. This money they accumulate is held in a fund for them that will later be paid directly to the four-year college they attend. The result is that they have a financial incentive from seventh grade to take um, rigorous courses and to get good grades and to show themselves that if they just do a little better they can accumulate real money towards their future. We wanted to get these kids thinking about college while they were still young. We'd seen how the smart kids were giving up on school as early as the seventh grade because the only future they saw was working in the fields. We wanted to show them a future and motivate them along a, a pathway that led to college. The whole project is to create leadership for our communities and help promote leadership. The REAP uh, program is, has been an essential element to creating a college-going culture. I would say one of the most incredible um, places where we've noticed a difference has been at our seventh and eighth grade level, where learners are um, more geared into and more focused on, at those early ages, that college is, an, is not an option, but college really should be their, their goal and their mission. So, um, so learners then enter into high school already with the college-going mindset. And then the fact that the REAP program aligns to our scoring system and have been flexible enough to work within our system to ensure that academic learning, lifelong learning, leadership skill development, which are all important to what we believe in Lindsay, and they're all foundational to what is part of the REAP program. So that's the scholarship component, but there's also an advisory component. Each grade level has a club advisor that we fund, and those kids who know these kids personally and help them along the pathway to college. Our goal is for these kids to become a college role models for the future generations that follow them, the, the kids in their families or in their community, their cousins, their neighbors. The spirit of the mentorship and giving back is an important part of the program. And the high school kids mentor the middle school kids. The ones who are now in college are required to come back and talk to the kids in the middle school and the high school and to share their experiences. 
Um, mentoring is a key factor of staying in, in qualifying for the scholarship. We decided to partner with the Lindsay School District because there was real energy there and they were experimenting with a modern education system, the performance-based system. Um, Lindsay's a primarily immigrant community. This system would better fit the, the needs of the students that are at different levels. Tom Rooney, who's the superintendent of the school, mentored us as we worked on developing this program and uh, he has been a, a real factor in helping develop the REAP scholarship program. The performance-based system um, essentially is creating the ideal learning experience. It's um, ensuring that we look at each individual learner, we determine um, their level of learning, we meet them at that level, we challenge them, we ensure their success, and what it does is it creates a culture in which learners truly become the owners of their learner learning, the navigators of their learning, and the activators of their learning. And when learners come to own their learning, um, what is possible for them and their level of motivation and their level of interest and their level of acceleration and their level of academic achievement truly is remarkable transitioned and transformed into the performance-based system because the traditional system essentially wasn't meeting the needs of our learners. It, it was creating a situation where learners were unmotivated, they were um, not excited about their learning, they didn't have any ownership of their learning, and they really often left high school without any goals or clear aspirations and plans about what they wanted to accomplish in life. And so we recognized in order to create a better future for our learners and to produce a better graduate for our society, we needed to transform our system and move away from the traditional system that was designed for a different time and for a different learner. I think it reaped effect in my life in a great way. Um, it gave me the funds for me to go on and into what I wanted to do, to go to CSUMB. Um, I didn't expect REIT to exist in a place like Lindsay. I thought, you know, REIT would only exist in Los Angeles or in really privileged areas where they have money um, in private schools or stuff like that where, you know, people want to fund these students because supposedly they'll, they'll be the more successful ones since they, since they have the more resources. Um, and when I first heard about REIT, that they were going to bring you here to Lindsay, I was like, no, I mean, it almost seemed like a dream. I didn't expect it to to actually happen and then when it just started to happen and it happened with my class I was like this is insane this is I have to work even harder for me to you know be able to receive these funds so REAP has affected me in a lot of positive ways thanks to the scholarship I don't have to worry too much about you know how do I pay for my books how do I pay for my housing how do I pay for my tuition at college I just have to worry about succeeding and academic academically in college REAP is very helpful for the kids in this area especially because since um, not a lot of families earn a lot of money so REAP helps students um, like pay for some textbooks like I know for me it really helped a lot because my financial aid covered my tuition and that's it so for my textbooks it was extremely expensive textbooks that I had to buy or rent or anything and um, because of REAP I had the opportunity to get those textbooks without having to take out any loans so I would say that REAP really helps out students in the monetary way because it gives you another chance to get obtain the necessities you need for school without having to worry about repaying a debt later. REAP helps out a lot of students at the high school level because it kind of comforts them to know that they're getting some financial, more financial aid than what they would get from the state or any other scholarship programs. For me, it helped me out a lot because I knew that my, my parents had to uh, pay for some of the fees like uh, room and board or rent and I didn't want them to have to pay for the rest of the cost of tuition and with REAP that helped me out a lot because I paid off my tuition and I'm kind of debt free at the moment so it's kind of comforting to know that I can graduate college with no debt. A couple of really um, wonderful things that we've seen is, is essentially um, at the earliest ages and all through high school is there's much more of a college-going culture. Um, and we've seen learners who are 
much more motivated to be at school and excited about their learning opportunities. So we look at things such as student attendance is, has gone through the roof. It's, it's increased by several percentage points since we've had the REAP program. We look at the um, opportunities for um, academic achievement and what our learners has done, have done academically and the ability for our learners to go after their learning. Two other pieces that are really um, important that are results from what the REAP program has done is in 2010, we had 21% of our learners going to a four-year university. At the class of 2015, we had 42% of our kids go straight to a four-year university. Many of those kids are REAP kids. Many of those kids didn't have college on their mind, and yet um, prior to coming into high school, and, um, and yet the financial assistance and the um, incentives and motivations to, to do well academically and to um, do well as a person um, have created an opportunity for them to actually go straight into a four-year university and, and, and reach their dreams. My goal is to become a certified public accountant. In high school, I took three years of accounting courses and I absolutely enjoyed it. So knowing what the benefits that come with becoming a certified public accountant that's the career I want to pursue. I started Sacramento State with a nursing major, but it's extremely competitive. And um, I have a few BEs here and there that would not allow me to get into the program at Sacramento State. So my plan is to get a BA in child development and then apply for a master's program uh, in nursing. I'm studying um, social and behavioral science. Uh, under that, there's a, def a, a couple of disciplines. One of them is anthropology, so that's my concentration is anthropology. And then I'm also mining in bio, and the combination of anthropology and bio, I'm hoping to go into biological anthropology as a doctorate student. That's where I see myself in a couple of years, actually. Once I'm done with my bachelor's degree, I hope to take maybe like a semester break, and then after, right after that, start my doctorate program. So that's where I hope to go with what I'm studying. There's many barriers that our learners have to overcome. And these barriers are, um, many of them, 90% of our kids are, come from situations of poverty. 50% are English language learners. Over 30% are migrant. Many of our families, parents, work in the fields or work in the packing sheds. And they're the, the sweat of the agriculture industry that we have in this valley. Um, with that um, is we have learners who really rely upon the school system to, to provide the opportunities to be pulled out of the situation of poverty. And so, and, and the, the place where they have support is really at the school system. Our parents love our kids and they work hard and they're very, very dedicated to their children and they do the best they can. But within our community, the average education level is the fifth grade. And so the level of support that can be offered at home for many of our families is, is, is very low. And so our learners and our, our parents trust us. They give us their children and they, and they say, take my child and give them um, a better life than I have. Give them an opportunity to succeed with potentially a, a college degree with a very promising career. And so through the commitment of Lindsay's parents and staff and leadership and the support of the REAP Foundation, we've been able to create that possibility for many more learners in Lindsay Unified. My father always told me that I needed to take um, advantage of the opportunities that were given to me. And knowing where my dad comes from, which is from Mexico, from a very poor family, he always worked hard ever since he was six years old. And I know that, I know personally that when he was young, he didn't have much. And if he basically didn't work, his family would basically starve. So, and I know he always feared of not have, being able to have a family in the future because he was just, he wouldn't be able to give anything to his family. Like he wouldn't even have the financial capacity to support someone. So I look at that as something for myself. I know I didn't grow up in the same situation, but I always tried hard in high school because I always thought to myself, I'm, how am I going to provide for my own family in the future if I don't have any education or a 
or a job that's going to give me the financial capacity to support one? Uh, the level of schooling my parents have, my mom finished the equivalent of sixth grade here in the United States and my dad finished what would be high school in Mexico. So that's, that's as far as we were able to go. Um, financially, my dad couldn't go on and then my grandpa wasn't the most supportive with education so she had to stop and then help support the family because they had a pretty big family so she had to step up and help out with the family. Coming from such a small town, um, I saw that the work here was mainly agricultural work and my parents migrated from Mexico to here for me to have a better life so they didn't want to see me do that work so my motivation to go to college was to not disappoint them and go out and get my education and become something in life. Like for me personally, my goal would be to ultimately get to be a nurse. What motivated me to go to college is one of my older cousins, she graduated from Lindsay High School and we went to a award ceremony and in that award ceremony they mentioned that you know, all the scholarships that she got, one of them was the Gates Millennium and then another thing that you know, they introduced her as is that she was also going to go to UC Berkeley mm -hmm. and from that moment on I, was, I, qu I didn't know what, what college was from that point. Um, I was just, you know, I thought, you know, here's sixth grade, I'm halfway done with school, one senior year hits of high school, I'm completely done, like I don't have to worry about going to school anymore. And it was thanks to her that I was exposed to what college was. I still didn't understand like what it really was, but I knew that I needed to go to this place in order to do what I wanted to do. So the way she explained it to me is that I'm going to go to you know, this university to get my dream job. And then that stuck with me. I was like, okay, if I want my dream job, you know, if I want to stay away from the fields, not that the fields are anything you know, bad or you know, they're just really hard on your body and you make a little bit, not that, not the greatest amount of money there. So I knew that if I wanted to stay away from, you know, working in a hundred and something degree weather with this humongous sack, I needed to go to college. So that's what really motivated me. And it was thanks to her exposing us, the entire family, because she was the first one in the entire family to actually attend the univer any, any university. So yeah, that's what motivated me to go on. And one of my main concerns about going to college was just the cost of it. I didn't want my parents to, you know, have to support me that much. And I was fearing, well, what if I have to get a job or it's gonna be more stress. But because of Reed, I didn't have to stress that much anymore because it helped pay off some of the fees. Um, when I was in high school, one of my main concerns was, concerns was having to pay for it because I know college can be, yeah, because I know it can be very expensive and, um, like room and board is expensive and just tuition itself was expensive and then all the other fees that are accumulated with the, the, with the expenses of school. So that was one of my main concerns and um, another one was leaving Lindsay and having to transition going to such a big city but and also um, leaving my family because I had never been away from them. So that, that, would, that would be my top three concerns of when I was in high school. Some of the concerns that I had when I was leaving home was actually leaving home. Um, my mom's side of the family, they all live here, so I have four uncles that live here and three aunts that live here, and then with my mom, it's the other uh, lady in the family. And then my both grandparents also live here. So it was a really difficult time to, you know, I'm completely rooted here. I have so much family, I have so many friends that live here. And for me to decide, you know, okay, I need to leave here, that affected me a lot for a couple weeks. The first couple weeks that I was in school, I didn't, you know, I, I felt extremely homesick and I knew that was gonna happen, I just didn't know it was gonna happen to that extent. Where I needed, like, where I felt like I didn't belong, where I felt like, you know, I have to make this somehow my home. Now that I'm in college, I would like high school students to know that, yes, it's hard and yes, you will have to pull all-nighters if you don't study, but I would want them to know that it's definitely worth it once you get your grades back and you see that it's the grade that you wanted and if it's not then you can always try again. I would want them to know that it's definitely worth going to college to show your family that you can do it if they couldn't do it and so you can be an example not only for your own family but also the rest of Lindsay. For high school students, I don't think they should wait until college to start working hard. I think they should start working now, if, especially if there's an opportunity like this because it, it definitely helps out in the future, helps out a lot in the future. Like, if you start work, working hard right now, it won't be so hard to work, to put in that effort in the future. 
like when you're in college and it definitely you know it helps to just be mentally prepared already for the rigorous courses. To the people wanting to donate to the REAP program, please know that this is going to students that really do need these funds. Um, our parents can't afford to send us to college. They can't, they don't even know what, you know, what a college experience really is without, you know, having these funds, without having financial security, which is a huge thing that parents have on their minds when they send off their students to any college. Um, it's, it's really nice to know that I have the security, that I, I have the scholarship, that I had this opportunity. Um, again, I didn't expect REAP to exist in a place like this. Um, I thought after you know a couple years it would just be like, oh, okay, we're done. We can't give anymore. So I'm, I'm extremely happy that my brother and my sister have this opportunity as well to have funds, to have a scholarship given to them because of how hard they worked. Because it, you know, it goes from year to year with grade to grade. With every single 4 or 3.5 that they do get, it shows that they, you know, they're working hard for these grades. And it's nice to know that there's programs out there that are willing to give these students, you know, with either, from our background, the opportunity to get the scholarship. So students that where their parents worked in the fields for any amount of time or first generation students and low income students, a lot of times we're seen as the underdogs or like, you know, our success rate won't be as high. And it's nice to know that there are programs out there that do believe in us because we do succeed if given the right resources. So our idea with the REAP was to use the money that we have to do on this small scale and we've gotten some other like-minded people in our family to contribute. But so far it's just a family funded operation. But we thought we were trying to expand it, this program was to expand it to other places. So now we're trying to propagate the REAP program in Cutler Arosi School District, which is another progressive um, college going culture school district of an immigrant community that uh, we've identified. And there's a high energy level there and they're trying to create a college growing culture for these children of immigrants. A little different than Lindsay's doing it. They don't have the performance based, but they're very progressive about getting scholarships and, and uh, we just wanted to support their efforts. So now we're looking for other donors to help us expand this program. There's been a lot of wealth created as a result of the massive immigration and the low wages and hardworking people. By donating to the REAP Foundation, you can contribute to creating a college-going culture in these small communities where the average education level is fifth or sixth grade. You can help the children discover all the possibilities that are out there for them. We've seen some real positive successes in this program, and we'd really like your help in, in continuing it and expanding it. Thanks. And our $30,000 scholarship goes to Myra and Emily. Congratulations to each of you. And